hello and welcome back to my channel in this video we will continue our revision series focusing this time on the economy and the environment now this teacher is asking her student to tell her the measures that can be put in place to reduce the impact of agriculture on the environment and his response is that we should simply stop farming. What do you think of this answer? Do you agree with him? If yes, why? And if no, why? Agriculture like mining, manufacturing, fishing, and tourism are all economic activities and are therefore central to the economy. If we do as the student is suggesting and simply eliminate economic activities because they are negatively impacting the economy, then what would happen to the economy as a result? Is the economy not important? The economy may be defined as a system involving the production, exchange, and consumption of goods and services so that people's needs can be met and scarce resources can be allocated. Economic activities involve the extraction, processing, and distribution of goods and services. Through economic activities, people sell their labor in exchange for income, which in turn can be used to purchase what they need. Unfortunately, as we carry out economic activities, we often burden the natural environment from which the natural resources are obtained. This negative impact on the environment is known as environmental degradation. Environmental degradation may be defined as the deterioration of the environment through depletion of resources such as air, water, and soil, as well as the destruction of ecosystems and extinction of wildlife. The best way to resolve the problem of environmental degradation is to practice sustainable development. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainable development has three main components. A social component which promotes good quality of life, equality, and progress of the society. An economic component which promotes cost saving, production, and consistent profitability. Finally, there is the environmental component which promotes resource management, biodiversity management, and pollution prevention. Forest is used for a variety of purposes, including shipbuilding, building construction, furniture, paper, fuel, and so on. In the process of extracting these resources, a whole area of land can be cleared away. This is referred to as deforestation. Deforestation can, be dis can destroy the homes of wildlife, cause landslide and soil erosion, and can also reduce the rate at which carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. One place in the Caribbean where forest resources exist is Guyana. Guyana is located in the northern region of South America between Venezuela and Suriname. It is one of the mainland territories of the Caribbean. 
Guyana is situated between latitudes 1 and 9 degrees north of the equator, so a large part of the country experiences equatorial climate. This climate experiences high temperatures and heavy convectional rainfall throughout the year. Two very heavy periods of rainfall also occurs as a result of the ITCZ passing over on its way north and then passing over again on its return south. The ITCZ is formed as a result of the northeast and southeast trade winds converging at or near the equator. The heavy rainfall along with high temperatures throughout the year support the development of tropical rainforest in Guyana. Nearly three quarters of the country is covered in this vegetation. The forest is so thick that only a sparse population are able to live in that region. Most of the country's population lives along the coastal zone of Guyana. The map shows the vegetation cover of Guyana. Notice that along the coast we have cultivated land. This is mainly sugar cultivation, which is carried out by the state owned company. Gaisuko. We will talk about that a little later on. To the northeast, as well as to the west of the country, is an area of savanna vegetation. Savanna vegetation includes both trees as well as grass. Along the north coast is an area of swamp. The greatest proportion of the land is covered in dense tropical rainforest. The Iwakrama International Center for Rainforest Conservation and Development was established by Guyana and the Commonwealth to promote the sustainable and equitable use of forest resource while ensuring that it is properly managed and conserved. The center will provide lasting environmental, economic, and social benefits, not just for the citizens of Guyana, but also for the world in general. The objective is to become a model for business development that results in the worldwide conservation of tropical forests. The forest is divided into two spatially equal zones. Half of the forest is used as a wilderness preserve, while the other half is a sustainable utilization area. The wilderness preserve is left untouched so that it can be regenerated. This half helps to maintain a pool of genetic resources. It is also used as a reference to check on the level of human impact on the other half which is being used. In the utilization zone, Timber is extracted in an environmentally friendly way. The area is mapped out and mature and valuable trees are marked before being felled. The center also shows that there is a variety of forest there, there, there are a variety of forest products which can also be used to make a profit besides timber. These include the seeds from crabwood tree, which can produce soaps and shampoos as well as insect repellent, 
wild honey can also be harvested and sold. One of the main ways that the center earns income to maintain itself is through ecotourism. Most visitors to the area are searching for an educational experience. One of the places where visitors are accommodated is the Iwakrama River Lodge. The lodge is positioned on the banks of the Essequibo River. It has eight river facing cabins. The cabins are designed in a way where they have very low impact on the environment. These cabins are equipped with fans, bathroom, 24 hour electricity supplied by solar power and a wraparound veranda with hammocks where visitors can relax and listen to the birds. Activities include boat trips, guided walks, during which visitors learn about rainforest conservation and the importance of protecting these fragile environments. Visitors also are given the chance to explore the forest canopy on an overhead walkway. The Iwakrama forest is also homeland of the Makushi people who have used the forest for generations. Visitors to the forest also get the chance, get the chance to retrace the footsteps of the Makushi people. The Makushi people are also partners in the conservation and sustainable use of the forest together with national and international private sectors. Thus, the center gets to achieve the social component of sustainable development while fulfilling the objective of learning by doing. Despite conservation efforts, illegal logging and mining still threatens the area. Under the Iwakrama Act, illegal operations can result in a fine or imprisonment. To respond to this, a monitoring scheme has been set up where a team of rangers monitor the area to detect illegal activities such as illegal hunting, illegal gold mining, and so on. Rangers also have the job of monitoring biodiversity changes in the area. Now, another South American country with an important forest resource is Brazil. The map shows the main vegetation areas of Brazil. Notice that tropical rainforest located to the northwest of the country occupies the largest area of vegetation. To the immediate south of Southeast of the tropical rainforest is the Cerrado. While the rainforest is associated with equatorial climate, the Cerrado, which is a savanna vegetation, is associated with tropical continental climate and is dominated by both grass and trees. These trees and grass have adapted to drought conditions that exist during the dry season. Now, to the extreme south is another type of grassland called the pampas, which is found in temperate climates. Other vegetation types in Brazil include a small wetland area to the west, thorny shrub to the northeast, and tropical semi-deciduous to the east. Much of these vegetations, especially to the east, have now been removed and replaced by human settlement. 
The Amazon rainforest surrounds the Amazon River and its tributaries. The Amazon River is the largest river in the world and flows from the Peruvian Andes to the coast. The Amazon rainforest is number one in the world in terms of biodiversity and freshwater ecosystems, as well as carbon stocks. It is also crucial for the world's climate as the plants form a huge carbon sink, pulling some of the excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during the process of photosynthesis. The rainforest has a layered structure. At the highest level is the emergent layer with the tallest trees, followed by the canopy layer where the crowns of the trees are interconnected to form a continuous cover. Below the canopy layer is the understory, where trees struggle for sunlight. This is followed by the shrub layer made of plants smaller than trees. Finally, is a forest floor with very few plants and a thick leaf litter layer. The trees of the tropical rainforests are anchored in lattisol soil. Though the soil has a thick leaf litter, it has a thin humus layer. This is because there is a rapid rate of decomposition which releases nutrients which are then quickly pulled up by the plant roots. Within the soil, there is a large number of soil organisms. The soil is reddish in color owe to the presence of iron oxides. The soil is very deep because of the rapid rate of chemical weathering, which is supported by the high temperatures and abundant moisture provided by the equatorial climate. Though the soil is able to support the natural vegetation of the area, it is not a very fertile soil. This means that when the trees are removed, the soil is prone to erosion and soil depletion. The Cerrado is the largest biome in Brazil after the Amazon rainforest. It is the largest savanna in South America and is the world's most biodiverse savanna. Its rolling grasslands and woodlands are habitats for an incredible number of species, many of which are found nowhere else in the world. Without the Cerrado, Brazil would face major water and electricity shortage. The Cerrado is referred to as the cradle of fresh water. The biome is a vital source of water, not just for the region, but also for surrounding areas. The Plateauan Plains of the Cerrado shelters the headwaters of the country's most important river systems. If we compare the trees of the Cerrado to those of the Amazon forest, we would find that they are like the trees of the Amazon turned upside down. While the Amazon has tall trees with shallow roots, the Cerrado has short trees with deep roots. Deep rooting is especially important because it enables plants to access water stored deeply in the soil during periods of low water availability and allow them to maintain transpiration. The roots therefore act as giant sponges absorbing and distributing water throughout the region. Now despite their environmental importance, both the Amazon as well as the Cerrado biomes are under threat. In the Amazon, mining, logging, 
cattle ranching as well as cultivation have put on sustainable pressure on the delicate rainforest. The destruction of the Amazon rainforest results in a loss of biodiversity as some species are unable to survive the changes to their environment. As new highways are built to give access to settlers and loggers into the heart of the Amazon, widespread fragmentation of rainforest is occurring. These fragmented landscapes alter the ecosystem leading to habitat degradation. Furthermore, the removal of trees modifies the global climate and upsets the water cycle. As trees are cleared and replaced by cultivated vegetation, the vulnerable soils are exposed and put at risk to soil erosion and soil depletion. The Cerrado is one of the least protected regions of Brazil. The area is one of the most threatened and overexploited regions in the country with unsustainable agricultural activities such as soy production and cattle ranching. The vegetation is also exploited for the production of charcoal. These activities continue to pose a major threat to the Cerrado's biodiversity. The capacity of the Cerrado to deliver and store water depends heavily on the biome's native vegetation. Increasing cropland has, incre has decreased the amount of water recycled to the atmosphere each year. The conversion of the natural vegetation to pasture deteriorates the soil, reducing evapotranspiration. Besides being located in South America and having common vegetation types, Brazil and Guyana have something else in common. Their economy, their economies are largely dependent on agriculture. One type of agriculture, which both countries have in common, is sugarcane cultivation. Let us take a few minutes to compare the industry of both countries. Since most of the land area of Guyana is covered in, in forests and a portion in savanna vegetation, most development is concentrated along the coast. This is also where the state-owned sugar company Gaisuko carries out sugarcane cultivation. The area therefore benefits from the availability of labor, local market, as well as closeness to roads, rivers, alluvial soil, and ports. Brazil carries out sugarcane cultivation in two main areas. The first area is the northeastern region where the plant was first introduced by the colonists from Portugal. This region is, however, less productive. 90% of sugarcane cultivation is carried out in the center south in the rural areas around Sao Paulo. The land area used for sugarcane cultivation in Brazil is much larger than the area under sugarcane cultivation in Guyana. Thus, the country is able to produce much more sugarcane. As the home of the Amazon and the Cerrado biomes, Brazil has an important environmental responsibility for biomes. that not only benefit the country, but the rest of the world. At the same time, the country is the fourth largest food producer in the world and ranks as number one crop producer for crops such as soy, sugarcane, and maize. 
to ensure that it caters to food security while being environmentally responsible, the country must try to produce as much as possible with little land as it can. Though the area of land under sugar is much larger than Guyana, it only occupies about 1% of Brazil's land surface. The sustainable expansion of sugarcane cultivation across the country is strictly controlled by regulations like the agroecological zoning of sugarcane national policy. New cultivation is only allowed on land that can be cultivated with minimum environmental impacts and that requires the least amount of water as possible. One of the ways that Brazil has managed to slow down the rate of agricultural expansion is by maximizing the use of land through the application of scientific techniques and technology brought about by much research and development. Today, the country uses technology in all aspects of sugarcane cultivation. The use of technology in Guyana has been limited due to its traditional field layout established by the Dutch. The Dutch bed arches upwards so that the slopes can assist with drainage. This results in a quicker drying time. This layout is beneficial for manual labor, being adequate for planting, harvesting, fertilizing, and spraying. However, the layout is unsuitable for the use of machinery. Under a land rehabilitation and conversion system, some of these traditional beds are being converted to broad beds, which drain along the length of the bed. However, Guyana still has a long way to go where technology is concerned. With increased use of technology, the use of manual labor is slowly decreasing in Brazil. To facilitate the transition, workers are being trained to operate machines and become familiarized with the most modern technology and techniques. The transition is occurring faster in the south central areas near Sao Paulo. However, the undeveloped northeast region is still largely dependent on manual labor. In Guyana, where the use of machinery is still limited, most of the work is still done by manual labor. Due to this fact, wages form the highest portion of the production cost. This competes with other things that the company would want to do with its capital. The country has also experienced frequent strikes related to wage disputes, which slow down production. Farming practices on Guyana's cane fields include preparation of the land, planting of the cane, managing the crop while it grows, and finally harvesting the cane before transporting them by canal to the factories. Before planting the sugar cane, flood following is often practiced where fields are flooded for months to wash out harmful salts, kill weeds, as well as replenish the soil fertility. This reduces the use of herbicides and fertilizers. Sugar cane is not always planted, however, as the country practices ratooning, where about four crops of sugar cane are harvested from the same root before it is dug up. The country also use, uses biological techniques to rid itself of pests which affect the crop. Some of the waste from the sugarcane processing is also put back in the field as a fertilizer. Due to the low availability of technology in Guyana, 
Manual harvesting is still the main type of harvesting carried out. To make harvesting safer for the workers, the cane fields are burnt before the canes are chopped. Brazil, like Guyana, also goes through stages of land preparation, planting, management of the crop while it grows, and harvesting. Like Guyana, it also uses ratooning to grow a number of crops from the same root. Due to the fragile nature of the soil, it uses farming techniques to help preserve the soil stability. Strategies include no-till production system, crop rotation with soybeans and peanuts, as well as green fertilization. Green fertilization is where cover crops are planted or leftover sugarcane straws are placed over the land after harvesting to protect the soil. The country tries to reduce the use of irrigation in an effort to conserve water. Like Guyana, biological pest control is also practiced where natural enemies are introduced to fight against pests. Like Guyana as well, Brazil also used the filter cake left back from the processing of the sugar cane as fertilizer in the field. This reduces the use of chemical fertilizers. Due to the fact that more machinery is available, Brazil is able to harvest green canes so that burning is kept at a minimum. At the end of the cultivation and harvesting period, Guyana mainly produces sugar and to a lesser extent, molasses. It is the largest producer of sugar in the Caribbean. Brazil mainly produces ethanol and sugar, but also produces bioplastics and biochemicals, etc. It is in fact the second largest producer of ethanol in the world behind the USA and the largest producer of sugar. Guyana often produces at a loss due to the higher production cost compared to its sale. With a very small population, Guyana has a small local market, so it relies on exports for the sale of its sugar. Being the largest existing producer of sugar in, the, in CARICOM, the country is able to export sugar within the region. It also sells sugar on the world market as well as a few specialized markets, including the EU. Brazil, on the other hand, has been able to produce at much lower cost. And due to its dominance of the world market, it is able to earn much more profit Unlike Guyana, Brazil has a large population and therefore there is a large local market for both its sugarcane as well as its ethanol. Okay, so I am going to leave you with a few questions. Make sure that you pause the video, try to answer the questions. And if you're unable to answer the questions, remember to just go back, review the video once, once more, and then try to answer the questions again. I am also leaving you with an exam style question. The question says, Compare sugarcane cultivation. Con compare the sugarcane cultivation of Brazil and Guyana. 
under any two of the following headings and this is for six marks so you will choose carefully the headings that you would want to talk about notice that it is six marks so you will get a maximum of three marks for each of the factor that you talk about right so try to make three strong points on each of the factors so that you can get your full marks okay once again thank you for supporting my channel i wish you all the best while you study and prepare for your exams don't forget to like to share and to subscribe